Hello, KCIW listeners, and welcome to Curry Cafe, where we put together a panel of volunteers and guests who discuss various topics from whimsical and fun to more serious subjects. Well, my name is Ray Gary, and I am the host, I guess we could say, for this edition of the Curry Cafe. And Rick, I noticed that when you said we put together volunteers and guests, you didn't say we searched the world to to find the best volunteers. And I always leave that to you, Mr. Ray. Oh, okay. Well, I've, I've stopped saying we it because I didn't expert. pay attention to what you say. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Any, anyway, today we really have done that. We have, we have two... Uh, Wonderful guests who have studied the subject uh, very carefully and can speak eloquently about it. Now, nice. <laughs> that was nice. We were originally. Oh, we're still going to uh, talk talk about the uh, Supreme Court mm-hmm. and um, oh, what's the, the debate debacle. And, and oh yeah, and the, the debate wonderful debacle. debate. Uh, but we we uh, have to delay that for a little bit because yesterday there was kind of a interesting event took place, and uh, I mean, we need to talk about that for a little bit. So, let's go around the table and introduce ourselves. Okay. I'm Candace Michelle, and I am the host of the show Our Community, and been with the station for 10 years now. Awesome. And I'm Rick McNamer, been with the station a little over a year, volunteer. I'm Robert O'Sullivan, sometimes go by Bob, sometimes go by Silky, <laughs> uh, and uh, I was a high school teacher as well as a pastor. Silky, where did the Silky come from? My basketball playing, oh. my, my hook shot, a silky. throwing them dimes. No, uh, an ex-brother-in-law who used Silky for uh, lots of things like his uh, email handle, whatever you call that, and, oh. and uh, Silky, he was he trained trotters, and the, the little cart that they run is called the Silky. Well, I have a equine relative. He was known as Silky Sullivan. Oh. And a very famous horse, and uh, I relate to him as well when oh. I... I love oh. that. <laughs> yes. That's a cool basketball name. <laughs> it is. Uh, I, I, I earned it on the Flatlands of Oakland. There you wow. go. Wow. <laughs> okay. Okay. Boy, everybody's got clever things to say today, and I don't have anything. That's okay. Well, you're early, no. you, you can be the straight guy. <laughs> no, no clever things to say today. I will report, though, that I'm making significant progress on my Model T, and it won't be too long before I'll be roaring down the road at 22 miles an hour, whatever <laughs> it's capable of. I can't Local wait celebrity. to see that. <laughs> right on. Okay, so let's get started. Who wants to uh, start out by talking about the events that took place in Pennsylvania yesterday? My my shock was when, when when I heard that he was shot at, I, I thought with sophisticated security things we have today, I didn't think anybody could get shot at. We didn't want them to be. Oops, I shouldn't have said that like that. I just started a conspiracy theory, didn't I? But I, anyway. Uh, but it's interesting, isn't it? Because a conspiracy theory can cut both ways, Right. I mean, mm-hmm. if you think about it, oh yeah, it could cut both ways. So, so yeah, I'd I'd like to kick it off because I I've been thinking about this. Um, first of all, it happened in Butler, Pennsylvania, which is about forty five minutes north of where I grew up, which is just, and it's so red there. It's so red. Um, the first I heard about this shocking. shooter, he was apparently a registered Republican. Yes, yes. Um, 20 years old, which is awfully young to lose your life, but but what, whatever. Um, obviously, um, we don't wish anyone bodily harm. We don't wish anyone <laughs> death. Obviously, that's, that's the truth. Um, we can disagree politically, and we can disagree morally and in all kinds of other ways, but it should never escalate to violence. I mean, that's just, that's not what the rule of law provides for, is escalating to violence. So um, I think it's appalling that that's what happened yesterday. Um, I think it's appalling that the security wasn't better, because the, the 
the guy on the roof with the gun was like 300 yards feet, away. Feet. Feet? Feet. So it's like, come on, really? You didn't sweep that place? But whatever. I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm glad he's alive and, and, you know, did not become a martyr. Um, and hopefully we can continue to have spirited and pointed conversations about what the positions are of the two parties. Because that didn't change. No. And one thing that is once again very obvious to us is uh, the fact that there are more guns than people in this country. And uh, wow. out of control Supreme Court, or extreme court as it's sometimes called, mm -hmm. uh, has basically allowed uh, weapons of mass destruction or, or multi and maybe not mass destruction, but... Uh, uh, as we learned in places like Las Vegas, uh, a lot of people can be killed Mass with killing. weapons that yeah. should not be in the hands of someone who has no particular reason to have for having it. Right. And uh, even more so, the court recently uh, basically allowed those uh, bump stocks to be added to such things that make them even more deadly as weapons. And uh, this points to the incredible... Uh, ability of the National Rifle Association to get its way in Congress, largely because of its willingness to uh, be a strong factor in the Republican Party. And donate heavily. Don't, don't, and donate heavily. And, and convince uh, people that they need to buy guns, too. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That, that somehow the founders, which, you know, was like, 200 and some years ago, somehow they could intuit that we were going to have these kinds of rapid fire weapons. And it would still be all right. And that was okay. Yeah. It's like, come on, people. You had I, to, like, you know, load the gunpowder and stuff with the guns. It was a time of muskets I, and yeah. primitive I say pistols. If, if, if uh, any of those people who wrote the Second Amendment were able to walk around the uh, Sandy Hook mm -hmm. kindergarten classroom, mm -hmm. I think they may have a, have a different uh, different take on it. Or if they had been sitting in the uh, stands at the Trump rally yesterday, Keep they'd speaking. have a different take on it. Speaking of Sandy Hook, this is a story I've told lots of times, so if you've heard it, it's short. Uh, <laughs> this, the day Sandy Hook happened, I was in Tucson in a uh, Home Depot and I was looking at nuts and bolts or whatever, and, and one of the employees came up to me and he says, there's, there's just been another school sh shooting. He said 26 kindergarten kids were, were killed. And, he's, and then he said, I guess the politicians will have a field day with this one. And in fact, they didn't. Just the politicians didn't do a damn thing. Yeah, of course. But that was his thought on that. Right, right. And it, it you know, it's, it's fascinating to me that that is where it goes. You know, you lose 26 five-year-olds, and that's where your thinking goes, is the First Amendment, or the Second Amendment, and, you know, your gun rights. I don't know. Well, that seems to be the, uh, one of the biggest focuses, and, you know, we were talking about the, if the Founding Fathers would have, could have seen that, would they have done it? I, I Maybe so, because like we were talking about Sandy Hook, Las Vegas, Columbine, the, the they're just all over the place. Yeah. Every time I I hear one of them, we all hear one of those. Okay, this is probably going to be it. What's well, never it? No. So that that oh hello, I'm sorry. We do I'm, before we go. We we've been uh, told to. We do have a text number if you want to text in, and it is five four one six six one four zero nine eight. So text in with your questions, comments. Um, so bigger. back. To, uh, back to that. Um, well, anyway, so that's the quote cats out of the bag. And Candace, you mentioned a martyr. I think he, they consider Trump a martyr already, I believe. Um, now, this will just make it uh, more prevalent. And all I'll say about that horrific uh, incident, I've already heard, I'm not a news watcher, by the way, I'm almost sick and tired of that. I get a lot of stuff from just 
quips and from other friends and family. But I have heard that the Trump administration, if you will, already blaming Biden for <laughs> this. And I'm thinking they're the uh, the yeah. people that yeah. want more access and free access to guns, blaming the administration, if you will, for we're, uh, they're the ones trying to limit access to guns and incidents like this. Yeah. So there you go. Conspiracy theory is probably already 20 more out there. I At least. <laughs> anyway, that's my take on that. Yeah. He also said it was the Lord protecting him, which is paraphrasing well, what there. Italy used to say every time they tried to kill him and he yep. survived. Well, I, I really feel bad for the gentleman who died. Um, he was protecting his family, he laid on top of them when the shots rang out. and Pretty horrific. It's it's. Just awful. Yeah, there was awful. somebody else in serious condition or something. Two we others were injured. Um, they were in serious condition, but they're both stable at this point. And, of course, the gunman was, was killed. So. And another question that's raised by this is why should a 20-year-old 20 20 be allowed to have a weapon designed <laughs> for war and, yes, and, and exactly. heavy policing? Mm. And uh, uh, back in the 30s, there was an attempt to at least ban machine guns, mm -hmm. and uh, that's been lessened by the Supreme Court. But uh, it's known that the human brain uh, doesn't really mature totally, uh, totally is perhaps not the right word, but until about the age of 25. Mm -hmm. And uh, for someone, and it's coming out, this young person who did this shooting, apparently was bullied in high school and probably before that and had no friends. And, and the immaturity that that goes with being that age uh, is just really dangerous for all of us. Yeah. Uh, and yet uh, uh, the interpretations of the Second Amendment have been bizarre and terrible. You, you mentioned, oh, yeah. the th mentioned the 30s when uh, machine guns were made illegal because— the um, gangsters were going around shooting up every place. Do you do you know uh, what the justification for making that illegal was? Simply oh. all the terrible things happening. Yeah, I know that, but I mean, the terrible things are happening now. In terms but of what, the Second the, Amendment? When somebody said we need to make these illegal, nobody said the Second Amendment. We, we Perhaps it was because cops were the ones who were getting killed, right? And maybe it lobbying was, strongly to be right. protected. And that, right. Right. I mean, it was law enforcement that was getting gunned down. The the interesting thing, though, is that they thought that would stop the uh, organized crime people from carrying machine guns again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Oh, yeah. we can't carry the machine gun, no. No. So it's, it's interesting to me. I mean, that kind of gets us onto the topic of um, the Supreme Court, or extreme court, as some people are calling it. Um, it made some bad decisions in the last few years, made some really bad decisions. Um, and I I don't know what they are thinking, right? I mean, how, how do you make it okay to put the bump stocks back in? How do you, how do you side with, uh, against the homeless population? Um, and with the city of Grants Pass against the home. I mean, how how do you overturn Roe v. Wade? How do you do these things? That's the agenda from uh, uh, Mitch McConnell has been doing this for 35 years, I think, or however long he's been. He's kind of been the orchestrator behind a lot of this. Um, but uh, that's the agenda they want to put forth. And that, by all of a series of goofs, I'll start out with, I hate to say anything bad against her, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Loved her. I thought she was important. But I thought that was a mistake that she, Stayed that home. Obama didn't kind of urge her out. Yep. Because that, oh, and who replaces her but Coney Barrett. Yeah. I believe. I'm pretty sure Coney Barrett replaced so, her. Um, might be wrong there. Uh, but the other one is, and then, uh, the, uh, oh, um, I'm sorry, McConnell giving it again when, Obama tried to get uh, Merrick Garland in there. Oh, and then it was, oh, we can't do it. Be what was it? Because of the presidential election coming up. to the president. Well, you yeah. know that was a bunch of... Yeah, yeah that makes, yeah. yeah. But 
Unfortunately, all these series of events have allowed, I think, I would call them crazy people on the court uh, with Coney Barrett, Kavanaugh. That disgusting display of Kavanaugh's, uh, what do you call, when they were, what do you call that? Can't think of that. Do you like the beer? <laughs> well, <laughs> well the, the worst to me was Lindsey the Graham's yeah. histrionics. I, and, and and then Kavanaugh breaking out into these croc, crocodile tears. Yes. Anyway, <laughs> it just, uh, but here we and, are. This and, is what we have. This is who we have now on the Supreme Court. Yeah. And, and Go ahead. And, and, and during his uh, apology speech or uh, explaining Cap- why he Cap- likes beer kind of thing. Okay. He, uh, down, he said, this is Hillary Clinton and, uh, and her liberal friends that are doing... Uh, to me, that that, that kind of uh, negated the idea that he could be uh, in any way um, impartial. Impartial, yeah. Yeah, he could, I mean, uh, he got, couldn't be a. a um, no, I'm just gonna say I think we've got people on there. In my opinion, I'm nobody, but that shouldn't even be on there. And I'll come, way back to Clarence come, Thomas. How come we're too. not looking back now at all their confirmations where they all confirmation? Yeah, all we're going to uh, you know. Abortion is the law of the land. We're not going to... Mm-hmm. Well, obviously, life. First opportunity yeah. they got, they just went... Yep. Let me make a, a, a general comment historically about the last 30 years. Despite the fact the Constitution really favors Republicans, and, and this has to do with the nature of the Senate, it has the nature of the Electoral College, and whereby people in large states have nowhere near the electoral power is people in, in small states, and therefore people get elected to the Senate who should never be there. And then the Senate has rules, which re- Democrats still sort of accept, well, they do accept, uh, requiring a 60% uh, vote on much legislation, which is profoundly undemocratic right there. Mm-hmm. Uh, but back in the post reagan era and so forth, there was a concerted efforts by people in conservative legal circles to try and make sure what, what they could not accomplish through legislation, they could control through the courts. And therefore, they wanted to get people who would be appointed, who would, who would buy their agenda, which is far distant from the agenda of most Americans. And basically, they've gotten away with it. Uh, and and uh, with that stolen seat, uh, they that they had one more voice, and if there's any institution that's profoundly un-American, it's the extreme court yes. because they are individuals who have arrogated on to themselves. In fact, I've coined a new word for it. It's elito crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, to themselves to come up with bizarre theories as to why uh, the things that many, uh, especially in that um, alliance between Republicans and rich business people, uh, to control the government that they couldn't control otherwise. And they're, they're doing it in spades and clubs and diamonds and anything but hearts yep. uh, in their uh, activities in recent years, and often using as precedent or, or explanation is to justify their, their position. Uh, some people that have, weren't even American. There was a, a British uh, figure who was in favor of uh, trials against witchcraft and who is uh, somehow cited in the uh, anti-abortion decision as as having any relevance to to what the case was before them. It, it had no relevance, but they've been in control of that court. And there are at least three members who have somewhat bizarre religious beliefs that they think they should impose on the whole country. Who gave them that power or that right? It's outrageous. To say nothing of the fact that they are that they essentially take favors that they don't ever report, um, trips to here, trips to there, vacations here, vacations there, that they don't report. I mean, it and from people who bring matters in front of the Supreme Court. It's it's like, 
Where are your ethics? Where are they? Well, who was, um, I can't remember the name of the vice president, who was had a case that he was involved in coming up before the Supreme Court in a few months and went on a duck hunting trip with, uh, what was his name? Oh, Dick Cheney? Dick, Dick we- Cheney went on a duck hunting trip in this guy's private plane together when there was a case coming up. Here. Okay. You know, I, in simplistic terms for me, there was just two things. Misogyny had a, a hand in this, in my opinion. I believed Anita Hill, and I believed, um, and now I, Chris D., what was her Yeah, name? I can't no. remember her name either, who Blaney, did she fight against. Okay. Yeah. The, good, good heavens, the one against Kavanaugh. Yep. Uh, anyway, and the fact that nobody, uh, or they let that slide, it, it just, it pains me to think that. Anita Hill still pains me. And to make this bipartisan, uh, Joe Biden was chairman of that committee and yes, let it happen. Agreed yeah. with uh, Clarence Thomas. Absolutely. Yeah, that, that hurts. Yeah. Yep. You know, okay, well, I was going to pivot a little bit. Go Just ahead. Me. We are also going to talk about the debate debacle. Look, Biden, my opinion only, um, again, I'm certainly glad he was president, is still... Um, Oh, gosh, we're okay. Well, I'll just say it out loud. After that debate, I thought he should have resigned the next day. Mm, I really right. do think. It was that horrible, and it's not getting that much better. Would that hurt our chances, help? I don't know. But um, uh, after, and I didn't watch the debate, let me say that, but I got all the bits and pieces in the talking heads but and the clips I saw. I just thought it's it's time that we need a little more youth and exuberance and so and Sen- that's just Sen- my opinion and i you know i contributed to his campaign a year and a half ago i think because i was worried about trump mm-hmm. and this is just political sidebars i guess but i can't tell you once i did i'm still getting mail two three four mailers a week oh yeah that's for more money that, and that's actually pretty normal rick well, you know what <laughs> Duh. I know that's uh, what was that pretty, pretty what, normal. Gold, not, gold, I, sh- I should naive. naive. I don't know, wait a minute, let me point out something. Go ahead quickly. Uh, if you contribute to KCIW, you will not be getting <laughs> requests every week. Mostly because that it's run by know. volunteers that and we, we can't know. get it together. We don't have, so, uh, mostly because we don't have a volunteer that keeps <laughs> records of who put. Right. No appointment. <laughs> Occasionally so, we do. Uh, so, Phil, uh, yeah. a couple. No, oh, no. And just one more thing. I'm sorry, but the last thing is. Uh, it, it, this sounds a little weird, but I'm serious. I, I call it the, I would vote for Biden. Of course I'm going to vote for Biden if uh-huh. he stays. I still want him to re- be replaced. But I call it the weekend at Bernie's vote. I would vote even if he was gone because <laughs> it's yeah. that important I know. to not have the other person get in there. Okay, so there it is. Many of you are sitting home right now <laughs> saying amen and, and, and blessing all of us for our, for our <laughs> comments. Or... Other or, or not. And many of you are sitting at home or wherever you are mm-hmm. screaming at the radio saying, how mm-hmm. dare these people say that? Mm-hmm. So if you are on either side of that, uh, you could pick up your phone right now and send us the text. Mm-hmm. Tell us what your opinion is. Five four one six six one four zero nine eight five four one. Six six one four zero nine eight. We have highly paid operators that are standing by, and it's just a waste of our money if somebody <laughs> doesn't get in touch with us. Please I send us know send you us were your opinion. Paid, Linda. Yeah, That's yes. amazing. <laughs> Bob, you were going to say something. Yeah. Um, a, a term that's been used, in fact, the Los Angeles Times had a, a long ad, uh, opinion piece by two law professors on this is that it's the corruption court. And there are ways this term that they especially showed their uh, lack of... Ethics. uh, Lack of ethics, lack of contempt for corruption. Mm -hmm. And uh, in some cases, uh, and there, there, there were predecessors of this, but this time it was even more blatant, where uh, a trucking company in its town had some sort of relationship and uh, uh, the uh, trucking company got a large, basically million-dollar type uh, contract from the town. And then after that was done, 
they gave uh, contributions of like $10,000 to the mayor. And they said that was not a bribe. <laughs> that was a gratuity. I see. A gratuity. Gratuity. Yeah. So well, mayors get gratuities? Well, yeah, it's they, like it's, it's, and, yeah. and if, if Trump gets elected, they won't have to pay taxes on those gratuities. <laughs> Yeah, it's called a tip, right? Yeah, right. That's yeah. another word for it, yeah. 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 Or simply and, not having to and, report them. Yeah. And there are other forms of corruption which are really extensive, like uh, decisions regarding the administrative law interpretations of federal law. Uh, basically, what's gone on for uh, ever since the Chevron Doctrine of 30 years ago or so is telling courts to defer to the agencies involved, which have experts, which have people who've long been on the job to make administrative interpretations of decisions uh, to be made, and uh, that the court should stay out of it, that they should defer to that. Duh. And now they have reversed yeah. that. Yep. And that just, and often with uh, just uh, incredible ignorance, in fact, in one case, uh, uh, regarding air pollution, uh, they, in their own opinion, uh, confused nitrogen oxide with nitrous oxide. Oh, nitrous oxide is what dentists use, the so-called laughing gas, and, yeah. and, and so forth. While nitrogen oxide is involved in the formation of smog, and the case was about if smog is created in, in say, uh, Wisconsin and blows down to Illinois. Uh, Illinois has a right to to insist that that's wrong. Mm -hmm. No longer with this current corrupt court. Amazing to me, just amazing. And there are other let's decisions not, that are similarly outrageous. Right. Let Let's not actually listen to the experts, right? Because, yeah, you know, because uh, our their big business friends don't like experts uh, yep. messing up their business by saying there should be regulations that keep the water safe keep the air safe, and many other things safe. And keep the temperature below 110 degrees in the cities. Yeah, which is really interesting to watch. You know, I was, I was talking to somebody the other day, and we were trying to figure out when, when do these areas actually become uninhabitable or in an uninhabitable? Mm -hmm. When is, uh, is it 125 every day for whatever? Or, and we, we, we don't even have the ability to push it away with... Uh, with air conditioning? Yeah, it's not, you, you can't live in 125 degree weather. And run from place to place. No. Yeah. Really it important. reminds me of 60 below in Fairbanks. That's what, you know, in the wintertime, pretty much, you jump from your car into the store and then back out again. And when you came out, your seat was frozen. And, yeah. and, and that'll, that subject there, too, back to the, uh, I guess, getting rid of the Chevron ruling. Isn't mm -hmm. that what happened? I mean, yeah, the, the environmental movement that uh, that a lot of us love, and we believe in climate change and global uh, global warming. That this uh, the extreme court doing what they did. It's going to give uh, more impetus or power to the polluters. I think. Oh, yeah. And I, I wonder why climate change, the two terms climate change, global warming, whatever you want to use. The conservatives have turned those into uh, almost bad words that. That they don't, oh, yeah. they won't say. They and have I, an excuse for everything. Yeah, yeah. And their, their favorite one: climates have always changed. We've done well, this. Well, yeah, and it goes the, back uh, to thousands. The, but climates changed over hundreds of years, not over the weekend. Okay, okay. <laughs> like the uh, whoever it was that brought in the snowball, I'll never forget that. And that was Wouldn't that you know, brilliant? like people. There's a horrible drought on. It rains one day. Oh, it rained today. The drought's over. Right. I mean, exactly. That's how, that's yeah. how they look at that kind of stuff. I yeah. think people elected that guy. Okay, we have a uh, okay. uh, person here who uh, wants to contribute. Hey, I heard this morning that Liz Cheney is considering running as vice president, Biden, as Biden's vice president. Any thought? I don't think that's no going to happen. No, no, but uh, <laughs> no way. No, I I think the ticket is pretty well set. Um, the only person who can possibly disrupt. The Democratic ticket at this point, which is Biden Harris, would be Joe Biden. And it would be President Biden making the decision that he did not wish to run again. Or his nobody, family didn't want him to do. Right. And yeah. nobody nobody else is gonna make that decision. And and rightfully so. 
I mean, I, I think rightfully so. But, there's no there's no two ways about the fact that he stumbles over his words. Sometimes he does. Um, and there are no two ways about the fact that he is 81 years old. We all know that that's reality. Right. You know, pre presidents typically don't have to make uh, split-second decisions. So you can ponder about it. You can yep. deal with your experts and all that type yep. of thing. So that's that's probably not a big deal. But uh, if, if he's in some kind of a conference or uh, negotiations with Putin or somebody and he's losing his train of thought, uh, it's just not good. Well, and we're just not voting for Joe Biden. I understand that. No, it, it, we're his voting whole administration. for exactly. Yeah. And he is surrounded by good people. Yeah, I, will I not agree allow with that. him to will not allow him to go off into the weeds. And I. Uh, wish that Lynn Cheney was one of those good people alive. I would like to see her, if Biden drops out, run for president. Oh, uh, that, Lynn, that Lynn Cheney is an extreme <laughs> conservative in yeah. many ways. No, yeah. I know, but she's 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 one of the few that stood up. Obviously the reasonable. I think she has congenital defects myself. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, again, the, my main problem. I've, is, I've, I think probably her thoughts after being the head of that committee changed quite a bit. I think she, I think that opened her eyes, and she said, "Wait a minute, this is, maybe." This but is I different. don't, I don't think we should uh, she's bank not, on that. She's a Republican through and through. I mean, uh, for generations. And there's nothing uh, necessarily wrong with the Republicans. I mean, really, no. as a party, they've devolved at this point they into have. a crazy. I, I call it a cult. To yes, myself, crazy. Group. Um, my biggest problem with Lynn, is it Lynn Cheney? Liz. Liz. Liz, good heavens, okay. Liz Cheney was her uh, adamant stance, uh, anti-abortion stance. Mm -hmm. You know, I know we have a lot of issues out there. I, I have personal uh, dealings with the abortion issue in my life, and it's really made me uber pro-choice. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's pretty radical the other way. That That's the biggest thing that, that bothers me with her. Um, and of course, the whole uh, MAGA movement. Yep. Yeah. And, and, I, the, I just and the extreme court, like right. Bob says, they're gonna, they're gonna get, they're gonna try to get rid of that. I think the extreme court, Supreme Court, is just a little too powerful these days. It seems Way. like to me. Don't Way. know how to stop that. It's a, it's a bad system. When it is can, a bad when system. When you can lie to become. Well, uh, we've got people, one of the people that you want to be there, there. and it's, and it's for life. And it's chosen. And I, dis I disagree. Or, yeah. Chosen by the party and be power. That way. Maybe yeah, that should be crazy. a different way. I'm going to bring up the age limit too. I, I'm me personally. I'm for age limits, man. Mm -hmm. Out there, I would, I, I, I would prefer term limits rather than age. Yeah, limits. Yeah, I say both. Me too. But mm -hmm. I was I was watching the news the other day, and there was some issue that they were interviewing all these different politicians about the senators and whoever, and every one of them. Look like they were eighty years old or seventy five. Most, it's, yeah, or any of them in their forties or thirties. Or I think what, Chuck Grassley. I think he's in his upper eighties. Oh, well, we had that guy that was. Uh, oh, what was his name? You're talking about oh God, Strom Thurmond way back. No, no, no. The okay. guy, the guy more recently that eventually had to quit because he told so many lies. Oh, are you talking about George Santos? Santos. No, no, no. Okay, no, he's a younger was, fella. Okay, well, the we're guy, bouncing around, but the, the guy who was Jewish. No, that was Santos. That was Santos. Oh, that was Santos? Yeah, that was okay, Santos. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay, he was a yeah. younger guy, but and that brings up another point about <laughs> my age requirement and politicians that hang on too long. Uh, we had our one local here. When all the the uh, evidence is against you and they just keep hang. I'm speaking of the Brookings City Council lady, <clears throat> number one. Can't just resign to keep hanging on. There's a mayor in Oakland right now. Bob, that's your old territory. Mm -hmm. uh, Shang Thao, I think her name was. At first, she was looking like she might help. Well, then now the FBI is raiding her house and just different things. Okay, you're innocent until proof of guilty. But when it looks that bad, wouldn't you just want somebody out of there? Uh, or, or wouldn't you think ethics back to you, Candace? Just get out. It, it just looks bad. Uh, I'll throw in McConnell again. He's speaking of age problems. He's had his issues. Um, oh my gosh, George Santos, like we were talking about. Uh, oh, Diane Feinstein, 
Yeah. I think she stuck around too long. Way too at, long. And people were trying to urge her, mm -hmm. but she just wouldn't do it. I, we shoot ourselves in the foot when we do that. We do. Um, but there's another way of looking at that, which is that if you believe that you are the best person for the job, you seriously believe that, and you've got 40, 50 years in the job, um, governing is something that takes some wisdom, and Agreed. wisdom is something that you usually acquire with age, or at experience. least... Experience. And experience, exactly. Hopefully you acquire it. Not everybody does, but if you're going to acquire it, it's probably through experience and age. So there's something to be said for keeping our elders around so that they can advise and help guide the ship. Whether or not they should be actually right there as the point person, as the face, you know, th that's May that's something we should we uh, should talk about. No, no, I'll, I'll agree. Maybe there should be a once they reach my <laughs> my uh, age limit, I, I'll throw out sixty five. That might cringe, and I'm I'm way over sixty five. But maybe we should have something. Uh, what do they call it? Professor emeritus, a congressman emeritus. They could stick around. But I just think we need more. There's a lot of youthful uh, youthful to me fifties. Let's say people in their fifties. <laughs> I think that there, <laughs> I know, that there's uh, a lot of intelligent, exper experienced people that, that are that age. I i don't know. I just see in the feebleness of some of these people, it's just not a good look to me. That's no, but it's not really, I don't know how scientific that is. But as but, somebody once, well, several people have said, if FDR had had to be on TV, he never would have gotten reelected. Never, because he was in a wheelchair. So, no, we would not have, we as a country would not have reelected him. Yeah, and that, that last term he would not have. Been. And it's a good thing we did. Yeah. I mean, that's, okay. he was one of our best okay. presidents. Yeah, I agreed. And I think Biden has done an excellent job. If you look back on what he's I accomplished in three years, it's remarkable. As for what he was up against also. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And Biden I think might... he has the cognitive ability to continue. He needs to have people around him, okay, obviously. I, I kind of question that, but I, I'm no expert. Yep. By the way, all you all out there listening, and uh, you're listening to KCIW 100.7 FM, your volunteer community radio station. Just wanted to throw that out there. And, and oh, oh, sorry. Ahead, Ray. No. oh, okay. And you're... you can get in touch with us at... 541-661-4898. You only have just a little over 20 minutes it's not to do that. 4898. Uh, it's 4098. <laughs> so um, we might have to. Uh, give, uh, should give we age, age limit be at it here? I think. <laughs> 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 All right. You're Forget fired, everything I just Ray. said. You're fired. <laughs> <Let's>, <laughs> There are things that can be done about the Supreme Court. Wait a minute. I'm sorry, Bob. Let me straighten that thing. Hang oh, on. okay. It's 541-661-4098. Good job. We got it. Not what I said before that I don't remember. <laughs> Go uh, ahead. The Constitution doesn't say a whole lot about the Supreme Court. It does give Congress the power to regulate its size and its budget and things like that. But uh, you might be surprised to know that the uh, idea of the Supreme Court uh, authorizing or, or rejecting legislation is unconstitutional it isn't in the Constitution. It wow. developed in the early 1800s in a case called Marbury versus Madison. And ever since that time, there, there was that sense that the Supreme Court could overrule everything. Now, it didn't always work that way. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, in fact, when uh, Andrew Jackson was president, he basically ignored them uh, on, on some stuff. And they made some bad decisions, uh, Dred Scott, Plessy versus Ferguson, that did have to be over, overturned. Uh, but uh, it, it's not inherent in the Constitution. And yet, and when you get a, a gang of religious zealots who are 
uh, appointed by a party dominated by large business interests, the one thing that you can do if you get a significant majority in the Congress is to expand the number of people on the court. There, there's nothing in the Constitution that says what the number should be. There mm. was a time when it was seven, mm -hmm. and uh, increasing it, say, by four, uh, with a Democratic president, uh, the balance in the court could be much more consistent with what the American people want and believe. Mm -hmm. uh, that's probably not going to happen, but it's one way out. Yeah. Well, what if, what if we're increasing it by four with Republican presidents? Okay. Well, that, yeah, I mean, that, 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 that could be worse. another yeah. problem, but uh, sure. the, the current problem, uh, I think the Republican Party realizes that it's probably never going to be a majority party in this country. That doesn't mean they cannot be a majority party in the House and Senate. But uh, their whole effort in the last 30 years to control the Supreme Court shows they recognize that. Mm -hmm. And they've done it. And they've done it mm -hmm. in spades, unfortunately. Yes. And they're, uh, you know, the schools, when you look at, at the fact that they they want the Ten Commandments in the schools and they they don't just want the Ten Commandments but they want it taught is wow it's just yeah and they the oh boy back to the abortion issue real quick I think there there's already been cases where not only do they want to restrict a woman's right to choose almost any condition uh they're going to go after, I firmly believe, this birth control. If they get in Absolutely. there, birth control will be... Next. Well, it's already being talked about. It. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think Thomas has spoken or has it written it in his opinions even. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, Yeah, if you're a woman and you're listening to this... <laughs> your body is no longer your own. Exactly. And yeah. and this is, this is and it. And if you're a guy listening, watch your butt. <laughs> wow, well, gosh. I mean, really, this, this election is it if you're a woman this is it in this country well it certainly will be for a, for a while i mean yeah i don't know if and that's another thing that we're talking about here we are i mean we are here where the supreme court is with a super majority i guess you would call it and even no matter who gets elected it's going to stay that way for a while the way it's looking right now um so what well, do we do? Where do we go? I mean, like if Biden actually wins and we control and and houses. the Democrats control both houses, then he and could have sixty votes in the Senate, right? He <laughs> could expand the Supreme and, Court. And like Bob was right. talking, I've thought exactly. about that too. I I don't know why they didn't start back when Biden first got elected, but you know, I uh, I think we've all been really slow on the uptake. I think. All of us have been. I mean, we've we've seen that there's a danger, but we haven't really understood, viscerally understood what the danger is, what the scope of it is. And it's now starting to become absolutely clear that yeah. you're gonna you're you're gonna lose your rights. Well, That's I'd like I'd like to uh, change to the decision they made at Grants Pass. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. um, Basically, uh, they said something in there that they should have been saying in other cases, and that was that these issues should not be decided by judges and courts. Uh, and I, I'm not agreeing with what they said on that decision, right. but it's when it's convenient to them to, you know, to use that, rationalize that yeah. their decision right. that way. But what they don't realize is the practicality of their decision. If someone in Grants Pass can be cited, arrested, whatever you want to call it, and because they're in a public park with a blanket or a pillow or a sleeping bag, they then get a criminal record. Yes. And being unhoused is difficult enough, but imagine how more difficult it is to get housed if you have a criminal record. Yes. And more difficult to get a job if you have a criminal. And and they're saying, oh, people get cited for this and that. It's no big thing. Well, it's cruel and unusual punishment when you are uh, punishing people and making their life consistently worth, uh, worst from then on uh, by using that 
cudgel to try and get them to move to the next town. And those people on the Supreme Court who have no understanding of what it is to be poor and to be unhoused in a country where there's nowhere near enough housing stock for everyone. And uh, if you're seriously committed to try and fight homelessness, that's what the emphasis should be, not trying to punish them for carrying a sleeping bag or a pillow or a, or a, a blanket. And how odd that it's almost like people living in ivory towers making those judgments on, yeah. like you said, something on that they... Ivory towers, yeah, or sure, Like or Marie sure Antoinette yachts. said, let them eat cake. Oh, <laughs> They don't have any bread. Let them eat cake. You know, it's like, yeah, wow. Just really not not clued into reality, you know. But clued into the reality of the recent history of the Republican Party, which put them in there. Yep. Yep. There's no denying. Exactly. And the reality of being unhoused in this country is it's a rough life. Sure. And for people to think, for people who have never been unhoused, to think that that is a choice uh-huh. that people are making, by and large, that is not a choice that that those folks are making. By and large, they have been affected by circumstances beyond their control. Mm-hmm. A severe disease, their house burned down, something... Losing a job. Losing a job, being in an automobile accident, something traumatic and huge has occurred in their lifetime and they can't get back and the services that we all assume are there um, I've had Diana Cooper Carter now on my show many times on our community and we talk about these safety nets that we assume are there because we as compassionate people believe that there should be safety nets there for people who are experiencing trouble. They don't exist. They're not there. And I think the pandemic really illustrated that for us. Certainly They're not there. Not worse. Yeah. And that those safety nets that we assume are there are not. And people fall through the cracks all the time. You heard about the, the latest uh, lawsuit that's been filed? Um, a gentleman who is a paraplegic and homeless has filed against uh, Curry County. Haven't heard. No. Yep. Just just happened. Filed against Curry County because they pulled a fast one and uh, trespassed him and uh, a few other people from a lot that had been a public lot. Um, the county commission evidently changed it real quick go to a private lot mm-hmm. and leased it out for a dollar for five years or something. I mean, it was just, it was such a, a scam, obviously. So, you know, I, I think there's going to be more and more of this. We are going to see people standing up for their rights, I hope. And the homeless problem overall now, of course, I guess you could figure in the population growth, but I mean, it's it's not getting any better out there. I don't. It's getting it's getting worse. It seems to me to be worse. Um, and granted, nobody wants to see you know tents and trash everywhere, but they they don't all do that. But what is the answer to that? I, you would think, shelters. Well, I was going to say. I mean, it's could every community should have, or could they have? A shelter in a certain location Obviously. where... Obviously. But nothing... I How don't know when that happens, if is that even that? happens. Yeah. What is this, what, what is the uh, status on us having the shelter? What, do Are we still we going to use that mo- motel for... We uh, don't have a shelter. That motel is used as a winter warming. Okay. Um, and it's generally when things are getting ugly in the winter. Here in town? In, mm-hmm. Okay, because yep. I know there's one in Crescent City they've opened up. Right. I think it's year long down But there. we have no shelter here. Uh, we do have what? some transitional housing. There, um, there have been that are state funds open. that were available for such, which the city council's never been interested in using. Exactly. They, they don't want, or no. they don't accept the funds? Well, they you have yeah. to apply for them. Oh, I see. And you have to be willing to actually do the work to create 
Right. I mean, they they could easily partner with Brookings Correspondence and St. Tim's and other places that actually care about the unhoused okay. um, to create such a thing. Yeah. Um, but they, they have no interest in it. Uh, there's been an attitude that if we provide too much in the way of giving help to these people, they'll stay. But if we give too little, they'll go to a place where they can find some more. Right. Just move them right. out of here. Exactly. So just keep giving them less. Keep giving them less. Don't, don't feed them. Don't feed them. Every day. Don't house them. Don't, don't give them showers. You know, don't, don't treat them like human beings. Treat them worse than we treat our dogs. I mean, everybody knows about the Humane Society here in Brookings, right? They're excellent with animals. Excellent. Wish we treated our people half as good. Kind of a related thing. I, uh, I, I was a state trooper in a small town in Alaska for quite a while. And during that time, I developed a reputation and because I, I worked on it to uh, uh, find people who were sexually abusing their children. And I, I later got that as a permanent job, but that this was just something I did in uniform. And every now and then I would, I would get somebody and uh, arrest them. And within a oh, short, very short period of time, people would be coming into my office saying, well, it's, it's about time you caught him. You know, we've all known this for years. And I said, well, why don't you say anything before that? But the same time, the same people would come in in about 32 seconds. If there was a dog on too short a rope or didn't have water or something, that would happen all the time. Yep, yep. It's amazing. It's just amazing. And yeah. and what I've heard, you know, I've heard people say, well, the animals are innocent. They they didn't do anything to get into that position. The people are innocent as well. Ninety <laughs> percent of them did nothing to get into that position. Do we have drug abuse? Absolutely, but not. It's not as prevalent as the people in law enforcement would have you believe. Or it's dangerous. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. It's unfortunate. And, you know, we're, we're kind of starting to run out of time a little bit, but, you know. Could we, um, I want to s switch back to the shooting again. We have about mm -hmm. uh, seven minutes left, and uh, I've seen uh, people in Trump's camp saying, well, this means he's going to win for sure, and... and uh, I don't know. I don't. I don't think it means anything. I'm, I'm, that was my first thought I when I found out that he law. wasn't dead and that, that he was going to get to run again. What would be the? Well, I think it, it's going to boost him a bit in the. Maybe we've already talked about. It. I'm sorry, but the the Reagan thing when Reagan, you know, mm -hmm. he was like mm -hmm. a, a stronger than most people and. And God was behind all of that, and I think it's going to boost him a little well, bit. Reagan was terribly popular anyway, but uh, yeah, this guy is, I think, well, he's popular with his base, that's for sure. In yeah, the but not with Trump is, yeah, but he's running the show. Yeah, I don't know. What do you think, Bob? Uh, I don't know how to evaluate that, but I want to mention another thing the Supreme Court did, and that's basically saying the President of the United States is above the law. Oh, Immunity. Right? Uh, well, yeah. you know what? You know what? Uh, I, I did see though that that now uh, Biden could, as uh, part of his duties, have Trump assassinated. Yes, that's how that case he could, could be just, run. He could yeah. just say he's not good for the country. He's dangerous. He's whatever. Get yeah. out of here. Yeah. Yeah, Bob. And again, expand on that a little bit. Yeah, the presidential immunity ruling, right? Yeah, it, it's it's one thing that a president has to have a, a lot of broad administrative powers, and that, that's a given. It's, uh, it's a big country and a complicated set of mechanisms. But that to be expanded to his own personal behavior that has nothing to do with his abilities, uh, that's basically saying we have a king. The mm -hmm. yep. mad King George maybe was a problem years ago, but let's have a king now. And that is not based on the law. It's not based on the Constitution. It's based on a political group that has seen it proper to make the court into a political institution that's barely accountable to anyone. And it really is about specifically about 
his behavior. Yes. Right on on January sixth. It yes, was. Right. It's specifically about that. That you know what he again. he has complete immunity for anything that he did while under under his you know professional duties as as president. Mm -hmm. He's was right. was standing there and telling his people to go fight like yeah. hell and all that, I yeah. mean was that legitimate? And why is he trying to get this the the New York trial thrown out because of that? Ooh, I mean yeah. that certainly had nothing to do with official duties. Yeah, in fact, it was before he was president, wasn't it? It's amazing to me too, along those lines, how that January sixth very bloody, violent incident against our country has been smoothed over by that oh, side. Yeah. It's, it's, it's and almost we have to, like... We have to let these heroes out of jail. Huh? Oh, and my God. Give them the of freedom, I merely guess. Merely tourists who got caught up in some... Yes. Right. I mean, didn't they them. look like tourists to you? I watched it on TV. They absolutely look like tourists. When I've been a tourist, I've always asked where the bathroom was. I didn't. <laughs> I know. I know. And that's and, your analysis. And I don't remember actually breaking windows to get in to see a museum, right? I mean, why would you do that? It's amazing to me that the... the, the Blinds that have been pulled over some people's eyes. I yep, don't know. I know. I know. Oh boy! I know, and I've I've said this many times. I don't see how we're going to get back from this divide because we keep hearing that about that pendulum that uh, yeah. swings one way and then the other. Mm -hmm. yeah. Boy, that I think it's. I'd be liking it way to, over there right now. I know. Now. I'd yeah. be liking yeah. it to start moving back. You know. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's pretty. It's pretty bad, and and you know it. It's about perception, right? I mean, if they perceive they the uh, the people who don't see things the way I do, if they perceive reality as this, and I perceive it as this, I don't see how we, I don't see how we bridge that. I have a friend who's an expat, and right now she's living in Portugal, and we get in touch every couple of years. And so she sent me a quick little text the the other day, and I. I answered it with all caps, as Trump would do, don't come back. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it's too bad, isn't it? Yep. So we're uh, we're just about out of time, Big Just right? about, but we have a couple of minutes to fill, and this is the scary part of the show where we've run out of things to say. Oh, no, 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 no. We haven't run oh, out of oh, things okay. to say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. I, I've never seen you run out of things to say. <laughs> never, so. never, never, never. Can it? Can yeah. Can I? There was a time when the U.S. Supreme Court was a positive force. Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, Brown versus Board of Education mm -hmm. was extremely important. Roe v. Wade. Uh, and Roe v. Wade was extremely yes. important. Yes. And uh, but the way the court has been taken over uh, has just changed the momentum of those decisions and uh, put us in a very, very scary place. So we do away with lifetime appointments. Definitely. I would. Yeah. What's the uh, point of a lifetime? I, well, it was I actually to keep it from becoming political. Mm. Uh, the, the the thought was that uh, they won't be influenced so easily yes. if they don't have to worry about being elected or reappointed that, or right. that sort of thing. Right. But uh, I think term limits is a much better idea. I and I, I saw this in California when I worked in the legislature. There were some people who had been there for eight or ten terms who were really skilled mm -hmm. uh, and became experts in an area. Uh, I think of Charles Warren about nuclear policy, and I, I had some contact back in those days. But when it, when it gets a mechanism just to turn people over, they start thinking, okay, I'm here, but I only can be here for two terms. Where, where do I run for next? Oh, there's the state senate, right. or there's Congress, or there's Secretary of State, or something like that. But uh, term limits is certainly better than uh, age. Than well, I, I, I age. Well, I I don't want to get into that. But besides, the clock is <laughs> and especially okay. when we only have thirty We're seconds. Eight, thirty seconds uh, left. Yes. Yeah, yeah, no. yeah. uh, it's time for me to think of some closing thing to say. Well, I can't think of any closing thing to say. <laughs> You've been listening to KCIW one hundred point seven LP. That's a Kevin, yeah, that's a good LP. idea. Kevin. Yes. Kenneth is beautifully closing the show for us yes. today. I keep those cards and letters coming in. Oh, yes. Absolutely. We love to hear from you and you let bet. us know what you want to hear. Go to KCIW.org. Join us. Mm -hmm.